Jesus journeyed through all the region of Galilee, Jerusalem, and each place was impacted by his love, by his works, by his miracles. But there was a place that must have been one of Jesus' favorite places where he prayed, where he looked at the city, and where Jesus gave great prophecies, giving us great lessons. We will go and visit this place, and this is why I would like for you to listen to this devotional today. Good morning, I am Pastor Carlos Rios, and this is our devotional, Mana, a daily adventure with God. The Bible talks about the mounts. God has carried out special things in the mountains, in the mounts. And so, in fact, I'd like to tell you that Jerusalem as such is a mount, Mount Zion, the city of David. There is something very special and beautiful when we visit Jerusalem, and I'm going to read about it today in the text that's presented in the Gospel of Luke chapter 19. And this is Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, where he came down from the Mount of Olives. And I'm going to give you details because the day that we arrive to Jerusalem, we first arrive through the northern part of the country where we will be visiting Galilee and Nazareth. We'll visit various mounts and go to the Lake of Galilee where the boats are. We'll go to where Jesus was baptized and many other special places. But these are on the northern part at the northern part of Israel, where we spend the first few days. And we will have topics in preparation for the final days that we will spend in Jerusalem. And it's a beautiful time. We have music prepared, because there's a moment as we're in the bus when we enter Jerusalem. And it's very difficult to hold back our tears. It becomes difficult because this is a place that we've always wanted to be in to visit even those of us who go every year we are still filled with nostalgia because we know that it is another year that god has given us the privilege to go up to the holy land and we reach the mount of olives where we have a very special time but why do we stop here first because whenever jesus entered jerusalem he always first stopped at mountain at the mount of olives and from this place, we can see all of Jerusalem. It gives us a great view. But behind all of this, there's a fascinating story that I want to tell you. This moment brings a biblical application for our lives. Luke 19, the tree beginning verse 28. After Jesus has said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. Now, there's a detail here, and it is that it was not the first time in Jesus' ministry that he went up to Jerusalem. I'm going to be explaining to you three moments, the three times Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he did it. He did them in a prophetic manner. Look, the first time was on a Sabbath, and we find the story in Mark 11:11. 11, 11. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And we may say that that was Jesus' first entrance into Jerusalem as priest. Now let's look at the second time. And we find this one in Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13. When he entered the first day of the week, in other words, on a Sunday. And if you recall, this is where it says that the Lord finds those who were buying and selling there at the temple. And he drove them out of the temple. Do you recall? And in this occasion, Jesus entered as king. And the third is the one mentioned in Luke 19, the passage we are reading today. Because here it says that Jesus cried when looking at Jerusalem, that he went into the temple. He taught and healed the sick. And here Jesus entered as prophet. And so this is very interesting. To know that Jesus went into Jerusalem, he entered Jerusalem, and this awoke many things inside of him, and it continues to do the same with us. Let's read the story from verse 29 through 34. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. 
as he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, say, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. Here Jesus begins his task of going into Jerusalem. And look at how interesting. He had already gone in other occasions. As we said, this occasion in Luke is a third time. And he asked that they prepare a colt for him. And this calls my attention greatly because Jesus did not have anything that he owned personally. But here the people were awaiting him. And he gives his disciples the instruction to go and take a colt that no one had ever ridden on. And if anybody were to ask why they were taking it, they were to reply, the Lord needs it. And that was how exactly how it happened. Because God had prepared for Jesus to arrive into Jerusalem and fulfill his task. Perhaps today God is preparing our hearts for the day when we arrive and there we will experience God's presence. Let's continue reading verses 35 to 38. I'm reading Luke 19. When he came near the place where the road goes down, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Look, perhaps the crowd did not even know what they were saying. The same crowd that was cheering Jesus on as he was entering Jerusalem and saying he is holy, blessed. A few days later, crucified him. It was the same group of people. And why? Because this is how the world is, emotional, religious, that although they have the master, the Lord in front of them, they do not understand what is going on because they did not know scripture, because they had, they had heard the prophecies but had paid no attention to them or forgot them completely. Let's continue reading verses 39 and 40. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And this is something that is very interesting, and I love to talk about this aspect. This episode of Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem, just as Jesus carried it out, it was surrounded by many things. And so here the crowd was excited, loud, saying, Blessed, glory in the highest, Hosanna. This is the Savior, this is Christ, whom we were awaiting. But then the people said to Jesus, Look, tell your disciples to be quiet. And what does Jesus reply? He says, Well, no, I cannot do that. Because if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Incredible, no? And what does this mean? Well, that those walls and stones would proclaim the message of the gospel. And why? Because this was the place that the Lord had chosen. This place was a witness of God's marvels and miracles within the walls of Jerusalem. Jerusalem being a city built with stones whose architecture is comprised of this, of stones. This is why Jesus says to the Pharisees, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. They will be witnesses. They will always give testimony that the God of the Bible is a God that from eternity descended into time that he chose a small place in the world to place his name on. And so this is why I insist, and I believe that every Christian should visit Jerusalem. And by this, I'm not saying that, that God is only in Jerusalem. No, God is everywhere. Oh, well, God hears our prayers more in Jerusalem. No, that's not true. God listens to our prayers wherever we are in the world. 
or if we go there and we bring back soil from Jerusalem or water, then these are blessed. No, that's not true. No, none of these things are true. We go to Jerusalem for one simple reason. We go because it is the land of the Bible, and Jesus is saying it here. If people were not to speak of Jesus, of God, of his miracles, of Jesus' time here, the stones would do it. And I personally announce it and preach it this way. Each place, each staircase, each stone, each corner talks to us about the work of Christ. And this is why this place is what it is. And so this year we will be bringing the groups into Turkey and also to Israel. In other occasions, we first gone to Egypt and then Jerusalem and Israel. And people often tell me, Pastor, what a difference. Egypt is one thing and Israel is completely different. But if we talk geographically, both these lands are very similar. They are both deserts. But where in Egypt we see scarcity, in Israel we see abundance of green. And this is the secret. I'd like to give you a task, but I've done it personally before. I've read Ezekiel 16, and the passage of Ezekiel 16 is beautiful because it is an analogy of a girl that is born, and it describes how she was born, the circumstances under which she was born. Then it says that God picked her up and dressed her. It's a beautiful passage, but at the end, God says, speaking of this girl, but we all know that he is speaking of Jerusalem because it is an analogy using a girl, but it is referring to Jerusalem. And it ends with saying, your beauty will stand out amongst all the places of the world because I have placed my beauty on you. And so if you ask me, why is Jerusalem so enchanting? I would tell you that there is a reason for this. Do you know what it is? It is that God's beauty is placed over this land. This is the secret. And this is why there are people who go back each year. People who have supernatural experiences in this place. Are you with me? If the men were not to speak, the stones would speak. Jesus made Jerusalem a place, a location, a witness to the whole world of a living and real God who was here performing miracles and extraordinary things, supernatural things. The passage ends with saying, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you even had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Now this condition still has not changed today. The people of Israel continue with their eyes covered, not acknowledging the coming of the Messiah. And for many others who, whose eyes are blinded because they have not acknowledged Jesus as their Lord and Savior, whose eyes are covered. And this verse ends up and saying in verses, this passage ends saying in verses 43 and 44, the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embarkment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. And this prophecy was fulfilled when in the year 70 after Christ, a Roman general called Titus conquered Jerusalem, killing its habitants without compassion. So how does this story end before we pray? When we arrive to this place called the Mount of Olives, this place will be witness to the most spectacular event when the Lord comes to the world on earth for, second, for the second time. You and I will be here visiting this mount where we can have a view. We can see all of Jerusalem and where the Lord welcomes us into Jerusalem. But you will also be in the mount where the following will happen. 
when Christ comes, but this is for his second time. Let's read verses 45 through 48. When Jesus entered the temple courts, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the leaders among the people were trying to kill him. Yet they could not find any way to do it because all the people hung on his words. Let's not forget that the Lord will descend here at the Mount of Olives. This will be the place of the Lord's coming the second time. It is said that it is, it is said that the Mount of Olives will be torn in two. Something spectacular will happen here. And so we are here before the land of all these scenes where these things happen, not just in the past, during the time when Jesus was on earth, but also where other things will happen in the future, when the prophecies of revelations are fulfilled. And this is why it is worthwhile. Father, thank you, because Jesus had the opportunity to go up to this mountain and from here pray for Jerusalem. From here he cried for its inhabitants. From here he announced to the world that he would come a second time. Lord, perhaps many of us are in the same condition as the people of Israel, with our eyes blinded and not wanting to acknowledge the Lord as the Messiah. Oftentimes, Christianity has to deal with the same things Jesus had to deal with when he removed all the traders and money exchangers from the temple because they had made religion a business. All these realities of the Bible are nothing other but God's truth for each generation, each day. I give you thanks because I know that you are bringing strength, encouragement into our hearts this morning by telling us that you will come a second time. I pray for each listener of Mana, Lord, and I ask that you open up their eyes of understanding, that you allow them to understand each day that your word and your message is revealed for their lives and that you will carry out miracles amongst them and amongst their families. May God bless you and guard you. May his peace invade your hearts and may God shepherd you each moment, each instant, guarding your entrance and your exit. This is why we give God this day and our activities for him to bless us and guard us. In Christ Jesus, amen and amen. There's something I want to insist in regards to our trip to the Holy Land. And this is why I do it with anticipation. Because, for example, when we buy tickets now, beginning now, we get a much better price, often even half the price. And so I invite you, if you are looking to go, if you want to go on this trip, then you should do it with enough time in advance because this will help you save. And so call us. You can contact, contact us through Messenger, through WhatsApp. And so I give thanks to God for those who have already registered to go and also for those who will be registering during this week. Blessings to all.